Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. We have a good show on tap for you this Tuesday. I, I hope you'll engage with us this morning. If not, sit back and uh, listen, because I think we all can learn some of what we're going to discuss this morning, and that's the First Amendment and how it applies to all of us as Americans in this country and how things have perhaps changed. I mean, ask yourself, are you familiar with the, uh, the five freedoms or so that come under the First Amendment? We all think right off the bat, I think freedom of speech, that's a good one, okay? Um, you know, there are some that I forget. Um, I know them, but if you ask me to reel them off right off the bat, uh, you know, freedom to assemble, freedom to petition the government, of course, freedom of religion, all of these come into play. And some have evolved to a certain degree. Some of our freedoms, uh, those would say are eroding to some degree and uh, I don't know I just want to get into what Americans think of the First Amendment and especially maybe how it applies to freedom of the press or journalism as well it affects all of you who watch us here it affects us who do this type of work and uh, we're going to talk about it this morning with a guest who uh, I think is very very knowledgeable on the subject it's uh, Ken Paulson director of the Free Speech Center at MTSU and it's a pleasure having him joining us this morning good morning to you sir thank you for being here Good morning, glad to be with you. All right, we've got a great shot. You're looking good, I can hear you loud and clear. Zoom always doesn't work great, but this looks really good, and uh, I, I really appreciate it. We, hopefully we'll take some phone calls, 737-7587. But uh, let's just talk first about the First Amendment. As I was saying there, um, I think you know most Americans have a, a, a handle on what the First Amendment represents and what's in it, but maybe can't you know name all five of the freedoms or you know aren't, don't fully understand them all. Can you give us a little bit of a primer the way you view the First Amendment? And if you think to some degree it's open to interpretation. Well, the 45 words of the First Amendment have been around since 1791, um, unchanged, but certainly not unchallenged. There are five freedoms together, though, and, and this is what people often miss, is that these five freedoms together allow us to be who we are as individuals. Uh, they're really collectively our freedom of conscience. Hmm. and. Uh, and you think about, uh, we'll run through them. And in fact, I'm gonna give them to you in the in the order in which people know them. Okay. So the one that people know most of all is freedom of speech. Um, really apparent, we regard that as being in, uh, at the heart of who we are as Americans. Anyone can say anything they want. Uh, and the government cannot interfere with that. Again, a very important distinction. Uh, the First Amendment only applies to the action of government. So government can tell you, uh, cannot tell you not to speak or not to say something. It doesn't mean your boss can't. Uh, the next uh, known about uh, by about 20% of Americans is freedom of the press. Uh, people uh, just think about that. One in five knows that the kind of work the media do is protected by the U.S. Constitution. And right in there, but at about 15% is freedom of religion, mm -hmm. obviously critically important to people. And that was the driving force behind the very adoption of the First Amendment. Uh, faith was very important to the first generation of Americans. And then the two that most people get tripped up on, although lately, because of what we see in the news, assembly is extremely well known. Yep. And uh, that's known by about 10% of Americans. And then as you note, the right to petition, the right to ask government to fix things is known by only about two to five percent of Americans. So collectively, you know, you acknowledged up front that maybe you couldn't name the five freedoms. Well, that wouldn't put you in in, in small company. I mean, there's only about three or four percent of Americans who can do that. Interesting. And, and like I said, I, I know they exist. And maybe we can talk about the first, just those last two you talked about, how people can actually you know, practice those freedoms. So I guess assemble would be if you want to participate in a protest or a rally. And petition would be, I want to go to the city council meeting and chew their ear about something that I want to see changed. Are those two examples of what you can do? And I, I wonder how many Americans have actually participated in a protest or a rally in their lifetimes? I think that uh, there's only about 20% of Americans who participate in a rally based on this most recent survey. Um, I would point out, though, that although today those seem like old school uh, and up largely unused rights, you go back to 1791, they would have been very big sure. because you you had no way to get your message out except to gather in the town square. You couldn't, nothing went viral. Um, you actually had to get together and raise your voices and protest and the right to petition, to write things down and say, hey, make this a law. 
that was very big in the in the beginning. So um, they are somewhat less vibrant today, but they're still a big deal. All right, so um, we've got a lot of details we'll get into, but speaking broadly at the beginning of the show, and this may get some folks to weigh in during the program, um, obviously First Amendment is something our, our cherished freedoms. From your perspective and what we see of late, what, what are red flags with regard to, maybe there's a specific one, be it press or maybe speech, where do you think there are issues with regard to the First Amendment that concern you? Well, there are a couple of them up front. One is, uh, you know, I'm the Free Speech Center is at Middle Tennessee State University. I, I teach there, I'm a professor, and I uh, have a lot of contact with earnest, well-intentioned, you know, good students. And what I see and what this national survey, the Freedom Forum did, uh, illustrated is that there is uh, anxiety about hate speech in America. That there's a sense that something has to be done about racist language and and uh, language that demeans others, and it's a well-intentioned concern. Unfortunately, when we see surveys nationally, it's not necessarily reflected at MTSU. We see that when students have to choose between free speech, the principle that you can say whatever you want in America, and the principle that people should be kind to each other and shouldn't say things that deeply offend or you know, disturb people, it's kind of a split decision. And that's amazing to me hmm. because the very reason for First Amendment and the reason for free speech is to protect the speech you don't want to hear. If we limit our constitutional right to speak out to things that people find palatable, find comfortable. But you don't need a, a free speech clause for that. You need the free speech clause to protect information, comments, opinions that other people don't want to hear. And in fact, that's what's driven the progress in America. You know, there was a time when people were offended by the notion that women should have a vote or that the slaves should be free. That was unpopular speech, but because we had it, we could change America in a very positive way. So that's a concern to me. It's 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 not a, an attempt to censor speech directly, but it is, you know, young people with good motives trying to figure out how we can be a more civil society and willing to give up too much to make that happen. Let, let's talk, yeah, a little more about that before we get to the, uh, the the part I know you want to talk about, freedom of the press. So what do you mean, sacrifice? I Because I... I you know, I see in this day and age now, especially with social media, I hear more hate speech in my life now, I think, than I ever have in the past. So I don't see a bunch of people clamming up because they're afraid to be heard. I mean, I seem to see more people sharing what I think are disgusting points of view. And, I, I, you know, I don't like it, but I have no problem with their right to say it. And I don't have my problem with me telling them, you know, how I feel about it right back in their face. So we see that happening a lot. What are you talking about? These young people then are being chilled into not saying things that they may otherwise say? No, just the opposite, actually. Okay. Uh, free, free speech is alive and well. Yeah. Uh, there's no question about that. And, and the, you know, the unfortunate thing is it's not richer speech that it's that people feel that speech is actually yelling and, and then they don't take the time to listen. Free speech is alive and well. What I'm saying is that the next generation of Americans who will one day run this country are not as robust in the defense of free speech. They don't they don't recognize that this is inviolate. Oh. And and that you do not limit free speech to spur to spare somebody their feelings. So that's the trend I'm concerned about. I'm not concerned about actual censorship in the short run. I see. It's that if you have uh, uh, if you have a fifth of American society, especially those going into leadership roles, who don't understand that you do not mess with the free speech clause, no matter how well intentioned you are, uh, that would be the problem. But no, I mean, what we're seeing now in social media would have thrilled James Madison and Thomas <laughs> Jefferson and the boys. Right. You know, this this is this is a killer app of the of the First Amendment. This is exactly what they would have had in mind. They would have been appalled by TikTok, but basically yeah. <laughs> they would have understood they would have understood the richness of the marketplace of ideas. Now this is a very good thing. 
Okay, interesting. Got All right, listen, we'll, we'll talk about just how good it really is and more uh, with our guest, Professor Ken Paulson over at MTSU. This is interesting stuff. And I, I, you know, I invite our viewers, if they'd like to join, 737-7587, your take on First Amendment rights. If you feel some have been infringed, how you feel about supporting them one way or the other. Uh, we'll take a break and we'll come back. Uh, we'll talk about, too, um, the idea that, yeah, you have your First Amendment rights, but yeah, your, your employer and others can place limits on them. You don't have to put up with it. You can quit, but if you want to stay there, you may have to abide by it. We'll talk more about that and more about the First Amendment with Ken Paulson right after this.